Hello everyone, this is Darwell20, and welcome to episode 43 of FTB Interactions, where today I'm just getting a few things situated, situated. Um, I turned off the RTX voice thing because a few people were commenting that like it was clipping some of my audio and having a couple weird issues with it. So let me know in the comments of this video if um, RTX should be left on so that it's like removing my keyboard and mouse sounds or if it should be off and I'll do my best to understand what people think and yada yada. Or if you guys don't care, that's fine too, right? So anyway, uh, between episodes, I've been making a few things, right? So last episode, we looked at making uh, light fuel, which we finally figured out. The problem that it wasn't crafting is because I just needed to, um, in this guy, like change the config from zero to one and then back to zero just to get it to write the MBT data. Um, once we got the light fuel, I was able to make steam cracked light fuel with steam, which by the way, I have a lot of. So I just took my chemical reactor, placed it right here, and you can even see I was tick accelerating it. That's why a battery's sitting in there. Um, and basically, boop, got that up and running. So that was cool, right? That was nifty, nifty and fun, easy peasy, right? Light fuel plus steam equals steam cracked light fuel. And then we can get ethylene out of steam cracked light fuel with program circuit nine in the same thing that we got the light fuel out of. So this guy over here, we put it in, we got it out with circuit nine, and that got me a reservoir that I've got about 3.75 uh, buckets of ethylene from. Now, the plastic chicken, which is what I'm going for here, um, requires some polyethylene, requires 64 pieces of plastic, which is what I was crafting between episodes, as you can see. Um, and then it also needs a piece of Quicksilver and a couple infinity dust, which I crafted using my arcane ashes thingy. So ashes plus grains of infinity in the alchemy array. So that was easy enough. And now I just need a single piece of Quicksilver, which is hopefully not gonna be hard to get. I mean, I have one, so I'm gonna call that a win, right? So that's cool. And then I think we should be good to get a level 10, 10, 10 chicken, woot. And he's in the mixer, right? He is in the mixer. So you, 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 and you with my polyethylene reservoir. With polyethylene, not ethylene. Hold on. So we have to do that. I forgot. So we're close, but we're not quite there. Um, I did. I was. I, I knew this. I made my air collector. Haha. Um, and he is going to collect a bunch of air for us. Look at that. Liquid air. Nice. And the combination here for polyethylene is going to be a bucket of air with 144 mil buckets of polyethylene. So I have a hardened reservoir that I made between episodes, which is very easy to make, thankfully. And you're going to potentially fill up. Is there not a sneaky trick to this? Maybe I need a tank. You think I need a tank? Do I have a tank? I've got this tank. Maybe I need a pump. Actually, I have a pump on me. I don't remember why, but... Oh, hey, something's happening. Liquid air. Woot, that works. We'll see if 16 buckets is enough. I mean, it might be. And of course, we will probably at some point automate all of this, right? Um, and now what I'm gonna do is take my chemical reactor, which has a little bit of light fuel and steam left. We don't need him anymore. I'm gonna move him over here. Uh, and that steam, I mean, like, let me show you how fast the steam fills up. Oh, we have 64 buckets of steam because we have a stupid amount of steam. We don't have to worry about that. I'm not worried about wasting steam. Please don't yell at me in the comments that I wasted the steam. It's okay, I promise. So now we take the air, boop, and the ethylene, boop, Make polyethylene. It's LV, right? LV and circuit zero. That would be you. Booyah! That's what's up. That's what's up. And that should get us a relatively healthy amount of polyethylene, which is usually a hassle of a process to make. However, once we've got um, something, something chickens, we can make this easier. Right? Um, you chickens make plastic enriched eggs, which in a chemical reactor can make polyethylene. Cool. Ta da! With ethanol, which, as we know from last episode or two, ethanol is really pretty easy to make with our biomass or fermented biomass that we played with 
last episode, right? That's how we got the 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 the, the mana stuff, which I kind of forget where I put that, but I'm sure it's around here somewhere. Um, what did I do with those manas? I forget. Something, something made stuff. I don't even know anymore. There they are, the unstable mana buckets. Too cold to handle. I knew I had them. I did. I knew I had them. So, remember we made these last episode a little bit ago? We used ethanol for them. It was a pretty straightforward process. So, the plan was we went from... Uh, now, how are you doing, by the way? You're getting there. How much do we need for this chicken? It's like 2.160. So we're getting there. We might need a little bit more air, but that's not going to be a problem. I can just hook up the basic air collector and let this guy make more air if he wants. Boop. Air. Perfect. Um, so what we were doing was we were looking towards getting the mana pearls so we can do the enchanting setup from Batania. In order to get that, we needed that stuff, right? We also need lots more mana pearls than we currently had, right? So we're probably gonna need a little bit more unstable mana because I think I need six. Is it six or eight total for the thing? But um, the pylons we need, uh, I think we need at least six. Oh, that's right, these guys didn't need them. We needed those eyes for something else. I forget, whatever, you get the point. Um, but we wanted to do that um, set up, so we're going to be doing that, right? Is it the mana enchanter itself that needed the thing? I forget. There's something that we needed those for. I'll remember at some point. But, hey, look, we actually have enough here. That's cool. Let's move you. You have amount two buckets. Why are you doing a bad job? Oh, you're just a little bit slow. Oh, okay, you're getting there. So you go in there. We'll just make the rest of the polyethylene because we have a little bit of ethylene, but we should have enough now to kick off the chicken producer, right? Hooray! Chicken happening. Go, chicken, go. And you can have air. Not a particularly exciting thing, but I'm excited about the chicken. Doot, a little bit faster. Doot! Hooray! Chicken is happening. Now, a couple people have told me that you don't have to make more than one chicken. You can just breed them with smart chickens. So let's see how that goes. Right? And we can do that. So now, like other things, there's a chance that we'll get a baby smart chicken or a plastic chicken, right? Like with other breeding mechanics that we've played with in the past. And then we can just breed up our plastic chicken into, hey, there it goes, 10, 10, 10. Sweet. So we put that guy away, and now you guys do the thing, right? Um, and that should be a lot of fun. So now we can breed up our chickens into a better version of them, right? And then the plastic chickens that we don't need anymore can go away. So I'm going to do this for a minute off camera, get them up to 10, 10, 10, and then look into using them. Because the other thing this guy is going to get us from his plastic enriched egg is... Polymer clay. That plus a single piece of clay equals, like, I mean, that's a pretty good recipe right there in an alloy smelter. So that's not going to be a big deal for us. I think that's going to be super cool that we'll be able to make a lot of that polymer clay so we can get the ender pearls that we need, right? Because that was definitely a big part of it. So I'm going to be prepared to trash all these chickens that we're not going to need no more. I did a bad job of paying attention to which one I was trashing, but it's all good. It doesn't matter. These things are pretty easy to breed, so I'll do the rest off camera. All right. I think that's two 10, 10, 10 chickens. Hooray. Goodbye, chickens. All the lower tier ones that worked towards getting me these dudes. Now, um, you've been doing a great job, Astral Chicken, who's just tier one and doesn't need to be higher tier at this point. Maybe at some point in the future we will make him higher tier, but it's all good. Uh, so I want another roost. Which I think I can request, right? That's right, the, the hay bales are not connected to the system. I still haven't gotten around to doing that. Not that it's been important for me to do yet, so not why, you know. But you get the point. Um, let's do roost. Thank you. And I believe I can put all 16 chickens in there. And he will just make a stupid amount of plastic enriched eggs all day long. And you guys can be done. You'll have some extra plastic chickens as a backup in case things go awry. So, hey, look, plastic enriched eggs. How cool is that? 
And boy, are they making a lot. And if we really wanted them to make a lot, I could do that. Okay. So now I can take my clay. Hello, sir. Holy cow, that's fast. <laughs> oh, the joys. Oh, the joys. That is not bad at all, my friends. That is super win. So those plastic enriched eggs, by the way, can be used for that, or uh, they can be used to make polyethylene, which I think we remember from previous series that that's usually a painful production line. So that just makes that production line that much easier. And now this guy can begin his runtime boot. That is cool. Now I suspect that a little tick acceleration would be bad for you, because as a reminder, this guy is 512 R for tick. This guy's producing or supplying 512 R for tick. So tick accelerating him will have a net loss on RF, but once the tick acceleration runs off, we'll be fine. And you guys seem to be having no problem maintaining that. So yeah, ender pearls for days. Also, also, also extraterrestrial matter, which is cool. What is a living matter manipulator from Ender Utilities? It does what now? Can store and release mobs. That's cool. I've never seen this tool before. Why have I never even heard of this? I don't even know what that is. I don't know what that is. Ender utilities. I thought it said extra utilities. And I'm like, a what now from extra utilities? That doesn't, like, so that doesn't sound like the type of thing extra utilities usually has. My bad. Broken spawner flare, oh, that's cool, okay. Um, it also does a multiplier in the agonizer, so if we're making more blood magic -y stuff if we needed it. We can also centrifuge it into ender pearls and liquid experience for more of that win. Ender biotite, huh? And ender air bottles, that's cool. 100% chance to get an ender pearl. Um, and then also blast furnace it into end steel ingots. Well, that's cool to know. Um, sweet. Now, in addition to this, we might also get pristine Enderman matter, which is a low chance, but we'll get 32 Ender Pearls for each one of them. And we can also use it in our chemical matter infuser to get Enderman heads and nebulous hearts. And we can also assemble it into a creative model learner. Oh, that's cool. I would like, yes, please. Creative item, huh? Requires dark matter. So, and glitch infused ingots and a few other things that look like they're farther ahead in the future to me, but a creative item that levels up data models inside the deep learner. Ooh, shift plus right click to increase tier, control and right click to simulate kills. <gasps> I love it, I want it. That sounds cool. That, so it like automatically levels them up. So as a reminder, these guys, he gets kills, right? We've already processed 12 data kills, right? So each time he simulates, he will occasionally, he will eventually upgrade, right? And become the next tier and give us the better chance at the stuff. So that is super cool, right? Um, so yeah, you, sir, I could probably maybe throw another CEUMV on there. That might be a neat idea. How hard would another CEUMV be? Just for giggles. I'm not saying that we totally need one, Missing a good electronic circuit. Yeah, we could totally make one of these and that would be neato burrito. Let's come back when that's done. Oof, can you believe I was out of redstone? Harsh. That's a lot of impure dust to process. I really need to like fully automate that line at some point. We'll get there. This thing's slow though is the problem. I would like a faster centrifuge. Maybe we'll do some MV or maybe when we get to M HB tier, I don't know. But I'm both processing it this way, which gives you a lot of redstone, and this way, which gives you a little less, but still a lot, right? It's still five per, I think it's 12 redstone per ore here and five here. Not a big deal either way. Uh, so do you have a CEU MV for me? You do. Thanks, Chief. I think I've moved my wrench. I needed it. I needed it to craft something in between episodes. Uh, there you are. Go onto my hotbar, please. There you are. And then mana steel cable. Did I use up all my mana steel cables? I thought I had some more. Six mana steel ingots is what we're short on. Can we get 12? Two mana stealing is what we're short on. Can I get four? 
I can get two sets of four. Good enough. That should be enough to craft it for now. Got to get more mana steel, but you get the idea. Uh, cool. Cool beans. Wow, I have a lot of... I've got just a ton of dust laying around that i got to process at some point. We'll get there. So much to do in this pack, and that's part of what I love about it. It's super fun. All right, so what did I need mana pearls for? I remember it was for something. Something important-ish. We'll figure it out. The Alchemy Catalyst. Yes. Yes. I needed purper blocks, didn't I? I needed purper blocks from the Alchemy Catalyst to make... To make the Ender Bookshelf. I remember now. Hooray. All right, cool. Uh, so Mana Pearls are going to be Eyes of Ender with Unstable Mana. And an Eye of Ender can be made an Assembler with the standard recipe that you would expect, right? Um, so Assembler doesn't matter, so we can just do an Ender Pearl. Well, we actually have an Eye of Ender already, so that's cool. Um, and that's a good time. And then you go into uh, 500 millibuckets of Unstable Mana, makes an Eye of Ender and an Assembler. So why don't I do two of these? Just so we can use a full bucket. Does that sound reasonable? We should have a decent amount of blaze dust because you get those for killing those dog things in another. Right? So you're going to go in here, chief. And then you're going to get one of the buckets of mana. And then you're going to get that times two. And that will be our first mana pearl. I'm very excited about getting because it means. Uh, I think that alchemy, or that transformation catalyst thingy is going to be pretty useful. And then meanwhile, you can come up here and do that. And now you should be having a net gain on RF. See that? Net gain on RF. By the way, who has 64 under pearls? Dyer has 64 under pearls. Thank you very much. I'm excited about that. So now we've got a net gain on our app instead of breaking even. And when we tick accelerate you a little bit, he's still gonna lose it, but he'll at least accumulate it back, right? And that'll be cool. So probably tick accelerate it a little bit too hard, but it's okay, it'll be fine. And remember, as these guys advance, even better, right? We'll have more and more pristine matter coming out of him. All right, so two mana pearls, which is yay. Also quest complete, also, also yay. What's that get me quest-wise? Ooh, Eyes of Ender, thank you. And also we did a chickeny thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Loving it. Uh, so Bottle of Iron Wine from Rustic. Oh, that's cool. I don't know what that does, but we're putting it away, along with the other junk that we got that's excess. All right, so with that done now, um, we can get into the Menomina quest. I'm presuming one of the next things you want me to make. So you want me to make an Elven Gateway core. That's one of the things the Mana Pearl is going to give me access to. But I'm not jumping to that point just yet. Um, I didn't get... Ooh, Rod of the Bifrost. That would be so cool to have. Unfortunately, I'd have to pick up the Mana Pool and destroy all the mana in it to get it. Which is a bummer. So we're going to have to hold off on that. Um, terrestrial agglomeration power, empowered diamantine crystal. I mean, that sounds all cool and stuff. Ooh, resonant upgrade kit. That sounds super cool. Um, but what we want is you were supposed to make for me this guy, the alchemy catalyst. Hooray. So you're going to need this times two, need brass rods. So I just need, I think, more brass. Oof, one of these days I will properly automate brass. Ugh. Seven, give me one more, just give me eight. Just give me eight. Hopefully that's not a huge regret. Um, really gotta do the zinc thing in the nether. Just, again, haven't super gotten to it yet. There's so much to do in this pack, which is what, this is what I'm really enjoying about the pack. It's like there's constantly something new to do, there's constantly more to work on, but none of it ever feels tedious. It just feels like I have a lot to do and I gotta figure out what's more important. And at this point, I think enchanting my gear would be more important. Come on. So I'm going to want two of these to go into the lathe. This one's a little automated still, but that's, or not automated still, but that's okay. Do, do, four brass rods. Get me what I need times two. You're missing an obsidian. Come on, steel plate. 
Let's go. Because I wasn't quick enough, it's going to be a little rough. We'll come back when it's done crafting. Okay, we are ready to roll. Boom, Alchemy Catalyst. Hello. That is cool. And you're going to go under this dude. And that is super cool. Alchemy Catalyst leads to a lot of good things. Um, it allows me to convert quite a few flowers and also a lot of different types of wood can convert between each other. Saplings can convert between each other. Um, it, it can do... I'm sure there's some things in here that are going to be super useful. Um, ooh, that all looks good. Yes. Yes. Flint into gunpowder. That sounds useful. Ooh, we can get slime balls through this approach too with cactus. That's cool. Uh, I like that. I definitely like the sound of that. So a few useful things to be sure, right? Uh, cycling through all the different types of flowers and tall flowers. That's cool. Ooh, and we can turn popped chorus fruit into chorus flower. That's cool. Also, the purple -pur block thing that I need. Shulk me not generating flower. Okay, cool. Nether stibnite ore turns into bismuth ore. I suspect that's going to be important at some point. We can also turn mana enriched eggs into mana powder. That's cool. We can get lunar reactive dust from extra utilities. Um, tiny pile of gallium dust. That's cool. And thorium dust turns into uranium-238. So I think a lot of that's going to come into play in the future. I like the idea of mana powder, though. That is cool beans. That one needs an alchemy catalyst. Right. But we have a lot of these mana-enriched eggs, so like mana powder just became way easier to get. Right? Right? That's awesome. All right. So what we want to do now is use that thing to do our thing. But I want to put you in here and take you guys out. That's exciting to me. The number of ender pearls we just created is very exciting. And the extraterrestrial matter is also going to be useful. But anyway, let's get back to work. Uh, so you, I wanted purple -pur blocks, right? Which are going to be needed for... So let's do purple -pur blocks, which are used for the ender bookshelf, right? Use enchanted books on any corner. Each corner stores many copies of that same enchantment. Use a book on it to withdraw. Hold a redstone torch in your hand and hit it to toggle display modes. Okay. Kind of know that. And that's from Cyclic. And the other thing we might want is an Ender Library. Surround this with Ender Bookshelves to deposit. Um, okay, so that's cool. Is that an Ender Chest? It has to be an Ender Chest? Yes, but that's craftable currently to me, so that's definitely doable. The controller block for the Ender Bookshelves. Surround it with Ender Bookshelves so it can connect and it will distribute enchantments. Can be automated by piping in enchanted books and pulling out empty books. I like it. Because remember, our goal here is to be able to use the high-powered Apotheosis Enchanter to get books with really powerful enchants on them. But we expect that we're going to get books with multiple enchants. If we want to use them in the Mana Enchanter, we need to split the enchants off so that there's one enchant per book. So we'll put a book into the Vanilla Enchanter. We'll get out a book with three enchants. We'll use this to turn one book with three enchants into three books with one enchant each. And then we pick which enchant we want to apply to our weapon or tool, and that's a big win. And when you use the mana enchanter, it doesn't consume the book. So once we get, for example, like looting five or something stupid like that, then, you know, we can use that and apply that to any weapon we get ever in the future. Same with like armor stuffs, right? So lots of enchanting to happen soon with the mana enchanter from Batania and this combination. So let's get this guy going. So you are going to need purple -pur blocks, a bookshelf, and some obsidian, right? Not a big deal. And the bookshelf is just a relatively standard process of getting it. A little bit of a hassle, but not terrible, right? Uh, so you are made with that. And then if we wanted to do the popped chorus fruit, is there any sneaky recipe for you? Not really. Okay, so yeah, that's just the, the gist, right? Um, so we need purple concrete, which can be made in the mixer with concrete, sand, gravel, and purple, right? So that's that, and then concrete is water, stone dust, and clay dust. Easy, McPeasy, awesome. And we'll get 32 of these per craft, so that's going to be no problemo. So all we need is um, half a bucket of water. Oof. So let's get a bucket of water, right? That's what we're going to do in our mixer. Uh, we're going to want two clay dust and a few stone dust. Do we have stone dust handy? We do have stone dust. We're going to want six of those. And we've got a couple clay, and I assume the clay dust will be in the macerator form of things. Clay dust. 
clay dust, bucket of water, Psst, world catch up, Psst, world catch up. Um, this is the part where you don't be weird. Oh, why did you go there? <laughs> I thought it was just lag, but nope, it was just dire derps. Boop, boop. Nice. And there is that much concrete. We can use a reservoir for that, right? And then we can, um, the purple concrete is again the mixer with four sand, gravel, and purple dye, right? Um, so we're gonna, oh, that's for polyethylene. Hold on, wrong one. There. Concrete. And we're going to want sand times, you know, let's just get it over here. Sand, gravel, and for purple dye, uh, what we're going to want is just red and blue. It's probably your best bet. So I guess we'll use lapis and some kind of, oh, we have rose bushes. Yes, please. Bone meal? I think bone meal I would have put in here. All right. Let's put this guy somewhere not too far, but not too close either. Hooray! Red dye for the win. See, Dyer knows vanilla. Any sneaky ways to make lots of red dye out of this? Uh, squeezer. That'll do. That's going to be red days. Red dye for days. Cool. So realistically, we don't need a ton of this. I think two red dye might be close enough. Perfect. But I wanted to have that red dye preparing, pre prepared for the future. Words. And look at all that red dye. Beautiful. For a future use case. And now that we've got purple concrete, we can turn them into purple -pur blocks. Nice. And then the purple blocks can be used to make the bookshelves. How cool is that? Now we've got very few books. I thought we had more books than this. Maybe I lied. I can make books, but also there's like towns that are not far away. I think when you guys even lead to Far Village. I may have already ransacked them for their books. I feel like I probably did. I feel like I already went through their library and killed all their books. I mean stole. I mean borrowed. I mean were given. Yes, they gave me their books. Freely and willingly. They were very nice about it too. They were like, hey Dyer, need some books? And I was like, yeah, that would be great. And they said, here, here is an entire bookshelf. Pretty sure I harvested that from this village already. If that's the case, I'll just have to manually craft a few, but eh, not the end of the world. I'll always take a few more worlds. Er. So you can see I already kind of explored this village. Huh. Hey, there's one. Thank you. Really wanted more than one though. Usually villages have like that one building that has like a million in it. Wow, you live in a weird house, sir. A very weird house. This village's spawn is definitely wonky, though, as you can tell. All right, what I'll do is, uh, I think there's one more village near home. So let's slash home. There's the one village that's not far from my main base. I'll just check that one to make sure I got all the bookshelves there, and then I'll have to make some books manually. But that's not the end of the world, right? We know that. It's very simple and straightforward. I'll be back. All right, requesting a bunch of paper and string and all that good stuff. And now we have a lot of that. And then what we're going to want is let's get like a couple of you. I love the automation with the oak wood planks. Automation is key in a pack like this. Even though I've not done a perfect job of it, I've done okay. Not great, not terrible-ish. 
So then you should make lots of bookshelves and we'll be back in a minute or two. All right, 12 bookshelves. Cool. I'm very excited to see how these Ender Library things work, right? Um, so that would be you, you, and some obsidian for us. I think somebody made the comment earlier, like, Dyer, why don't you use all those saplings you have outside for EMC? I don't know if there's an automated way that I can EMC them at this point. It would be cool if I could route them into that table automatically, but I don't know if that works that way. It might. I might be able to. I've never actually tried, but that could be a thing. Right, so I get four of these per craft. That's cool. I don't know how many I need, so I'm just gonna go with 24 for now, and then we'll see. And then you, sir, uh, need an Ive Ender, which remember we had an extra one of because we got that as a quest reward. And then you, sir, get that surrounded by bookshelves. So let's bring this down into our basement and see how this works. So, doot, doot. I want to say this is like a drawer controller kind of setup. Right? I think that's what we're looking at. Now we've got an enchanted book here. That has infinity on it and endless quiver, right? So that's two enchants. So do I like, how do, how do you work? I think we can pipe into that one or empty use an enchanted book to store that's what i'm trying to do chief yeah this is an enchanted book maybe it's because it's a tome of the archers oh that would stink let's test this with a low level enchant right because i think i can pull that off not you Protection one, right? Oh, hello. Oh, hello. That's cool. Now the bummer is that Tome of the Archers is totally not working. I guess it's only for books, but that's cool. And then I can do that to get it back off. All right, we learned an important factoid today. They only work on enchanted books. I wonder if I can... Now there was a way to disenchant you, right? What else we got? Enchanted book, Vorpal, Venal, Projectile Protection. All right, well, I'm gonna put you in there because you're junk storage, remember? Um, can I transfer these onto a book? Because that would be cool. Nope, I want this one. Getting low on blank patterns, it's fine. Can I like... Do this or something? Look. Yeah, I gotta figure out a way to convert you into a... into an enchanted book rather than a Tome of the Archers. I think that's the problem. Because it's Tome of the Archers, it's not going to let me store it in the enchanting system, which is totally a bummer. But regular books can. So while having the tomes is nice, right um because it lets me really focus the enchant thingy like and decide which enchant to get uh i think what i'm going to wind up having to do is use books normally right so what we'll do is something like this you ready let's do uh you sir let's put a book in here right and we're going to turn that off so what book would i get punch three venom four bane of arthropods two nothing doing right so we're gonna say no and no and give me a level two enchant power one you're garbage i don't want you turn that down and then boop boop and we could get efficiency seven that sounds fun flame four and looting two boo i want a good looting well let's do efficiency seven that sounds like a fun enchant to get right so if i got level 60 off this book that i have and as a reminder i don't think it's going to use all 60 levels i think it's only going to use a handful of levels let's see if i'm right about that so boop boop Three lapis, haha. So that got me efficiency seven, cool, okay. And I'm still level 57, by the way. All right, let's just see what my next enchant would be at level 60, smite seven. Ooh, looting five, oh, that's cool. I mean, looting five sounds cool, right? Should I get looting five? I feel like I should. Level 45. 
I wonder if I can get looting six. I don't know. I don't know how high it can go, but I'll get it for now because it's there, right? And that also gave me fire protection, right? But we don't want that. So I'm going to click that on here twice like that and see how they put them in there like that. Sweet. And then your efficiency seven. Let's put you in the library, right? Then we get a book out and say, I just want looting five. I like it. I like it a lot. It's like, it's like, it's like drawers, but for enchants. How cool is that? So you're going to give me smite, lore, and sharpness. None of those that I want. So let's do the, this thing. And what we should do is put the enchants back on the book, right? And it's a lot of clicking, unfortunately, which I think kind of stinks, but eh, it's an is what it is kind of scenario, right? So boop, boop, boop. Protection one, you're gonna go in the junkie enchants, right? And then you would be without the lever. Life mending three, looting four, not quite as good. Protection three, right? I don't know what, I don't know why it's red either, because that's not red, even though I'm not level 45. So I don't know. It's an interesting thing for sure, right? So you and you would be that. Bane of Arthropods, Protection, Temptation. None of those are good. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be level five when I do this because I wanna see if like the enchanting in this pack is different. So this will either make me level three or like level like 4.9 or something like that. If it makes me level three, we're wasting enchants by doing level five. If it makes me like 3.9, it doesn't matter, right? Let's actually make myself like level, we'll do level 10. So we'll see if I lose an entire level or like a really tiny bit of experience for this enchant. You ready? Only one level, so that's not bad, but it also only did one level, it brought me from two to one. So I'm gonna say like still a waste of experience to do that, right? Because when I was level two, it did the same thing, right? So fire protection seven. Fire protection does sound like it would be cool. Multi-jump also sounds cool. Oh man, oh man, all the things. I really wanna like, build up my repertoire of, of really nice enchants. So I think that's what I'm probably gonna do a little bit between episodes here, right? I think that would be a cool thing to do. Fire protection also gave me leech, right? So we can do boop, boop, and there you go, nice. And I don't know what temptation does. Wait, it tells me entices nearby farm animals. No thanks, I'm good. I'm good, punch three, nature's blessing, protection three. Yeah, I don't want that one, so we're gonna use that. And again, I could use one experience level, but one level from 57 to 56 is a huge difference. All right, so we're well past the wrapping up point here. So what I'm gonna do is between episodes, I'm basically gonna rinse and repeat. Ooh, holding one. I mean, it's not terrible, but I definitely like a higher holding. Uh, this process, right? Vorpal. Vorpal means more head drops, right? That's kinda cool. That's kinda cool, right? At this point, it's lapis that's choking me. I need more lapis. Disjunction too, I kind of forget what that does. How am I for lapis? Eh, we're fine. Hey look, even more lapis dust. Are you still set up to do this? You are, do that for me. All right, so I'm gonna wrap up the episode here. Uh, Vorbal does sound cool because when I need to get beheading, um, you know, I think I'm like when I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna need it ever, but I think because I'm getting offered it as an enchant at level 60, I should probably take advantage of it. Vorpal 4, I don't know if that's great or not, but we'll find out, right? Vorpal, if I'm not mistaken, does beheading, right? Pretty sure that's what it does. Well, if not, oh, and I got on breaking eight for that as well. So that's a nice benefit. That is super cool. And what do we got here? Multi-jump five. I don't know if multi-jump was one that I wanted, but I kind of like the idea of it. So like, let's check it out. It's not that expensive to get these enchants, right? and knock back three, boop, boop. That is cool. I really, really like that. That's from Cyclic, right? Yeah, super cool. All right, got to wrap up at some point, but I'm having too much fun. Projectile protection, how much? <laughs> oh, that's happening. That is happening in a half. Imagine projectile protection 10 against all those dudes out there, right? And smashing I got. All right, continuing to enjoy how ridiculous this is. Sharpness six sounds good. I don't know like if there's better, but I'll get it because it's as good as I've seen so far. 
I might, it might go up to seven. I don't know. We'll find out, right? If it does, then, you know, we'll figure it out. All right. Double 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Holding six sounds kind of cool. We will come back next time and continue uh, the ridiculousness. Oh, I got protection for reflective defenses, holding and sharpness six again. Now, is it going to mark sharpness six? Yeah, I've got two sharpness sixes now. Ah, that's cool. That is super cool. All right, occult aversion. Yeah, no, I'm going to do the this way. All right, really got to wrap up the episode. Double 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.